The broader fandom interpretation of Catelyn Stark is unfavorable to say the least, and in many instances, it's downright unfair. Not only is Kat judged incredibly harshly for the way that she deals with many situations she finds herself in, but she is oftentimes blamed for things that aren't her fault and even considered stupid for making decisions that are actually pretty smart. And a prime example of this is Kat's arrest of Tyrion Lannister in A Game of Thrones. The negative reaction to Kat's choice to essentially abduct Tyrion and take him to the Vale is an interesting one because it loses sight of Kat's point of view and essentially judges her to be foolish because this move winds up having a pretty terrible outcome. But when looked at from Kat's perspective and from the perspective of anyone who doesn't know how things will eventually pan out, this was arguably one of the best calls that anyone could have made if they were in her shoes. And to presume that she's an idiot for making that call is just unfair and borderline objectively incorrect. Interestingly, Kat's biggest strategic mistake in this entire ordeal actually comes before she even encounters Tyrion in the first place. When she and Sir Roderick are traveling through the Riverlands, she passes Jason Malister, someone she is extremely familiar with and who is extremely familiar with her. And yet, he doesn't recognize her. So, despite Sir Roderick's advice that they should avoid the Inn at the Crossroads, Kat decides that she's safe enough and unrecognizable enough that they can stay there for the night. And that is arguably her worst decision in this entire ordeal. Once she actually arrives, she does her best to remain inconspicuous. And it is King Scrub Marillion, of all people, who ultimately outs her to Tyrion when he is coincidentally seated next to Cat and draws Tyrion's attention when he enters the hall. Tyrion immediately calls her out, which obviously really puts her on the spot. A fact that is acknowledged in her inner monologue when she thinks to herself, there was no time to think it through, only the moment and the sound of her own voice ringing in her ears. But she comes up with a plan on the fly, and as far as plans go, it's actually an incredibly solid one. Although Tyrion is arguably more powerful than Kat in nearly every place in the world, he makes the mistake of confronting her in the place where she has home court advantage. Despite the fact that she has been a Lady of the North for over a decade, she immediately makes note of the fact that she was a Tully first, and then calls out all of her father's bannermen to question their loyalty to Lord Hoster. Tyrion is understandably baffled by the exchange, but Cat finally makes her intentions known when she loudly proclaims that, This man came a guest into my house, and there conspired to murder my son, a boy of seven. She then delivers the knockout punch, commanding that, In the name of King Robert and the good lords you serve. I call upon you to seize him and help me return him to Winterfell to await the king's justice. So needless to say, that escalated quickly. And on its face, it's easy to see why this course of action seems insane. However, it is also one of the best courses of action that Kat could have taken given the circumstances. And she really doesn't get the deserved credit for how low-key galaxy-brained this is. Especially considering that she came up with it on the fly. But what is it exactly that makes it kind of a 4D chess move? Well, firstly, now that Tyrion has seen her at the Inn at the Crossroads, a place that she is definitively not supposed to be, she would be putting herself and especially Ned in danger if she just let Tyrion go. The Lannisters aren't stupid, and if they know that the Starks are engaging in some sort of conspiracy, that's going to be a problem. If she did let him go, then that would allow the Lannisters to get the drop on Ned. And even in the best case scenario, Kat could attempt to get back to King's Landing faster than Tyrion to give Ned the heads up. But even so, that would be an incredibly risky bet, and would then leave both Kat and Ned stranded in a potential hornet's nest. One of the things that I love the most about what Kat does too, is that she essentially makes a move that Ned ultimately should have when it came to the illegitimacy of Cersei's children. But he didn't. Standing up at the Crossroads Inn and saying that Tyrion Lannister conspired to kill Bran is one hell of a bold decision. But it's also an incredibly clever one, because it is essentially a public announcement that puts everyone that needs to be on notice, on notice. Kat is not in a position to be able to help Ned herself. Nor is the North in the position to help Ned as quickly as he might need it. But by making this information public, it at least in some way protects Ned because either the Lannisters will be wary of doing anything against him, because if anything happens to him, the world will think that they did it to cover up their own crime, or the Lannisters might hurt or even kill him, 
But the entire world will now know why, and take that as a tacit confirmation that what Kat said about House Lannister was true. Similarly, again, Kat's move was a smart one because she has the home team advantage in the Rimmerlands. Not only can she actually make this move because she has more authority than Tyrion Lannister here, but because so many houses in the Riverlands become immediately involved, and because this is such a huge deal, it guarantees that this news will spread like wildfire throughout the kingdom. Ironically, this is something that even Tyrion notes when Kat supposedly tries to cover it up, without realizing that it was likely her intention for it to spread in the first place. Because when it does spread, even if she can't give her father a warning or strategize with him on how to handle it herself, she's ensuring that he knows what's up, and essentially that he knows to be prepared to go to war with the Lannisters. It's no coincidence that just prior to running into Tyrion, Kat is thinking about going to River Run to seek her father's wise counsel, and she rests assured that her father would call the banners for her if he needed to. Now, it's easy to judge Kat because on the surface, it seems like arresting Tyrion is a guarantee that the Lannisters will act out against the neighboring Riverlands. And that is somewhat fair, because it is. But frankly, the very fact that she had been spotted by Tyrion already guaranteed that the Lannisters would almost certainly act out against Ned, House Stark, and any of Ned or Kat's allies anyway. Therefore, her actions are at least ensuring that everyone who is now in danger knows that they're in danger. And she's making sure that if anything unseemly happens to anyone, suspicion will immediately be cast upon the Lannisters. Yet another sneaky smart decision that Kat makes is plainly stating that she would be taking Tyrion to Winterfell to await justice. And even Tyrion himself is bitter about Catelyn's ability to outsmart him here. But, the benefits of Kat's decision has different layers of brilliance to it that she once again doesn't get any credit for. As Tyrion thinks to himself, the distance to Winterfell is so far that it's extremely unlikely that Kat could have gotten him there without being intercepted, even if she wanted to. But throwing any pursuers off the trail and toward Winterfell also has its own benefits, including for this reason. Not only is Winterfell such a long trek that anyone going after them would waste an enormous amount of time going in the wrong direction before they found out they were actually going the wrong way, but any stronger forces that might ever follow would basically have zero shot of making it beyond the neck anyway. In theory, one of the biggest appeals of taking Tyrion to the Eyrie should be that A, Catelyn's sister is in charge there, and B, Lysa already seems to hate and mistrust the Lannisters. Cat ultimately gets a lot of heat for going to Lysa, but it's important to remember that she has no idea what kind of state Lysa is really in. She doesn't realize that her sister has been lying to her, and she has every reason to believe that her sister and the entire Kingdom of the Vale will take her side. A belief that ultimately seems to bear out as the Veilmen are quite frustrated by Lysa and then Littlefinger's lack of action as time goes on, and the Blackfish literally abandons her for not backing up their family, which seems to pretty clearly indicate that Lysa's refusal to really help is a genuinely shocking and unexpected move. But there are strengths to this choice that often go completely unacknowledged as well, because it's not just about Lysa being in a position of power and hating the Lannisters. When Cat runs into Tyrion, she essentially has four possible courses of action and places to go. She can let him go and go to King's Landing, or she can arrest him and take him to River Run, Winterfell, or the Eyrie. Option one is arguably the worst, as losing any leverage by letting Tyrion go rather than keeping him as a hostage, and then returning to a city where she has very few allies and will essentially become trapped just like Ned is, seems like an obvious no. While River Run isn't the worst option, it's far from the best either, as its proximity to the Westerlands and its relative lack of geographic protection would leave Cat and House Tully on the back foot either way. And although Winterfell is arguably where Cat is the most powerful, where there is no chance of anyone turning on her in favor of the Lannisters at this point, and where the Lannisters have no shot at mounting any legitimate force against them, it's very far away. She's unlikely to make it there with Tyrion, and the distance that needs to be traveled ensures that anyone who could be acting against her or her allies would be able to pull plans together before she could even stop and take a breath. But strategically speaking, even ignoring her expectations that her sister will rally behind her, 
The Erie is the best place for her to go for a multitude of reasons. Firstly is the proximity. While the road to the Erie is winding and rough, it is the closest option as the crow flies, and it's not beyond believability that she can make it there before anyone else makes it to King's Landing or Casterly Rock to ring the alarm. Even on the toughest journey, she would be able to outrun anyone who knew to come after her at the Erie, and her ploy to make it seem like she was taking Tyrion to Winterfell didn't apparently arouse any suspicion with anyone anyway. And then there are the geographic advantages to the Vale and the Eyrie itself. The entire reason that the Vale was its own distinct kingdom for so long is that the Mountains of the Moon provide a ridiculous amount of natural protection from the rest of the country, and they would be impossibly difficult for any outside forces to traverse. There is only one way in and out, and the Mountain Clans prevent anyone from making it through stealthily so it'd be virtually impossible for anyone to sneak up on them or get to the Vale without Kat knowing that they're coming. And of course, there is the Eerie. Understandably, Lysa is a driving force behind Kat's choice to go there. But it is a castle that is impossible to invade in a kingdom that is impossible to invade. It's arguably one of the best places to take a prisoner if you actually need to take someone prisoner. So even if Catelyn didn't have every reason to think that Lysa and all of the Valemen would be ready and willing to throw their might behind her, she really went to the best place she could possibly go to make sure that she at least keeps the leverage that she has with Tyrion. Now, while I think that Catelyn doesn't get nearly enough credit for her smart decisions and pretty astute insights as a political mover and shaker, it's probably fair to assume that, although these are all solid arguments in favor of the choice that she made, she probably didn't have every single one of these thoughts as she was making it. This is a situation that caught her completely off guard, and she had mere moments to actually decide what she wanted to do. But as far as split-second decisions do go, she made the best call with the choices and information that she had. Again, it's easy to criticize any character when the reader has a bird's-eye view of everything that's happening everywhere. But Kat's decisions here are actually largely reflective of her supposed bad choices in many other instances. A lot of what goes wrong with Catelyn's choices comes down to nothing more than bad luck and people that she understandably thinks that she can trust outright lying to her for reasons that she wouldn't understand or be suspicious of. And despite that, she is often fully blamed for screwing up situations or accused of outright stupidity because things go wrong in a way that pretty much no one would ever expect them to. As with many other situations Kat finds herself in, her arrest of Tyrion largely backfires because everything that could go wrong for Catelyn does go wrong. If even one more thing went in her favor, this could have had a cataclysmic effect in favor of Team Stark. But it didn't, so it's used as one more example that Kat is a big dumb dummy who yet again screws things up by supposedly making the wrong call in situations that she didn't create or want to be in in the first place. But either way, regardless of the ultimate outcome, arresting Tyrion and taking him to the Eyrie is far from Catelyn's worst decision. On paper, it's actually one of her best. It's a choice that demonstrates how politically astute she can be, and that she genuinely has some pretty great strategic instincts. Even Tyrion Lannister, widely acknowledged as the smartest character in the books, is shocked and appalled that Catelyn outsmarted him so easily in this scenario. Which is why both the negative reaction to this situation and Catelyn's choices as a whole is so surprising. There are a lot of obvious driving forces behind the hatred of Catelyn Stark within the broader A Song of Ice and Fire fandom but it's obvious that this perception leads to many criticisms of Kat that are unfair and arguably downright incorrect. There are plenty of incidents that demonstrate Kat's intelligence that she never gets any credit for, but the perception of this particular event as an example of Catelyn's idiocy is just plain wrong. It was actually the best choice she could make in a bad situation that she was forced into, and it deserves to be acknowledged as such. But what do you think? Was Catelyn showing off her galaxy brain when she arrested Tyrion? Or is it as dumb as so many fans say? Leave your thoughts and opinions below, and if you're interested in more content like this, like and subscribe.